So let's just ask Brian, how was your week? Renee, I, I had a wonderful week. I spent three enlightened days in L.A., the city in which I grew up and could not possibly, if I tried, escape fast enough from. It was horrific, man. Sorry, anyone in L.A. who you know wants to buy scripts and stuff, but I just don't care for that town. <laughs> And I was in the valley, you know, I'm, I'm in the valley right next to all these studios and I'm driving by them. In fact, I had lunch one day right next to some studio I'd never heard of. But I mean, these these things are everywhere. And uh, man, so just the, the people, the traffic, the construction, the other 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 problems. I actually this is this is the much nicer version of the call that, that I had with Renee a few days ago when I was in the airport in Burbank. Yeah. Just trying just clawing trying to claw my way out of that town. Um it was not pleasant, nor was it productive. I spent an entire day on set on Thursday um delivering some washers to some to the to a client. Washers, you know, like the little metal washers you put mm. around screws. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to get into how that worked, but I'm just telling you that was my entire day. That and going to the airport. Wow. When 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 you can say, all right, what did I do today? And you look at your checklist and you've got deliver <laughs> washers. It's not a good day, man. Not no. a good day at all. I could not just, I just wanted to end it and start Friday. So that's what I did. And on Friday, I, I did something similar to what you're doing, except that you kind of gave up carbs. I mostly gave up food because, you know, I've got to find some bones somewhere in my body. <laughs> That's just my, my jawline. <laughs> so I'm on day two. Yeah. All right. So that goes. We'll check in every week. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Make sure we're so both alive. alive. Exactly. It's just me talking to a blank screen that somehow, you know, started the feed, started recording. Yeah. Renee? Renee? You there? <laughs> Renee? Renee? Anyway. We'll be the, the opposite of The Walking Dead where... Instead of eating meat, we're just like grabbing fries out of people's hands. <laughs> Bread. Fries. <laughs> <Exactly>. Love rice. <laughs> you find yeah. us at Olive Garden, never ending uh, <laughs> pasta bowl. <laughs> yes, we're simulcasting this week from the Olive Gardens. Exactly. Plural. <laughs> exactly. One in California, one in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, that's it for me, man. That was my week, unfortunately. Yeah, well, you know, just um, to kind of uh, park here on L.A. Yeah, you know, L.A. is... Um, that's that's a wonderfully ironic thing to say, by the way. I know. That's what everybody does every day. So I think people can relate. I'm just saying trying to find a parking spot in that oh, town is yeah. unreal. There's that too. Unreal. Blocks. Uh, I had always... Before I had... Well, just to take a step back, uh, everyone watching and listening, I had spent uh, close to a decade of covering the entertainment industry. And before then, I had very little reason to drive out to L.A. And so there was always a little bit of trepidation on my part, um, mainly because, you know, I don't really know the town very well. Um, and, you know, parking, I've always heard parking is a pain, all of that. Um, so, you know, early on, I would go to events like super early, like an hour and a half early if I had to, just to scope out a good parking spot. Right. <laughs> um, and, you know, little by little, I started to find like the prime real estate where I knew my car would be safe, where I knew there'd yeah. be plenty of parking, even if I had to walk a little bit. And, you know, you just slowly start to expand your knowledge of little areas around LA. But I got to tell you, early on, uh, I remember running late to an event, to a, a movie screening, and it was on the west side, so it was in like Westwood. Hmm. And the, if you have ever tried to park in Westwood, uh, you can never park. It's just yeah. people continuously like circling buildings, <laughs> looking, like waiting for something to open up. It's it's like uh, the 10th level of hell. Um. <laughs> And so that's what I did. You know, I didn't, I don't know Westwood. I don't, you know, I rarely go there. So me and my buddy, my plus one, we were just circling. It's like just making wider and wider circles, trying to find that parking spot. We finally, or finally, finally found this parking lot that was like formed on top of a building. It was really weird. And it had like six parking spots. And there was a parking attendant to, you know, take your money, you know, for the privilege of parking 
in one of these parking spots that was like five miles away. I'm exaggerating. It's like more like a you know, half a mile away from our destination. Right. So yeah, I paid my $20, $20 to park there. Uh, and then me and my buddy are just like running to this screening. Yeah. In the but, middle of Westwood. Exactly. Yeah. But that is the LA life. Not for me. Not anymore. Yeah. No, Never hey, going good back for you. Unless I have to. Well, no, I'm the same way. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why I gave it up. Um, yeah. You know, the last screen, well, so uh, I say I gave up the entertainment industry uh, or uh, covering it, but I still go, you know, when there's a Marvel movie, I still have my, my Disney contacts. Like, oh, yeah, I'll screen that. No problem. Good to your Star Wars movies. Or And my Star Wars movies. Right. Um, but the last movie before I made the conscious decision to, like, stop all my my screenings except for Disney. Yes, uh, which is the one that broke your back. I, I can't oh man, it was it was a bad movie. It was like an independent movie that was like, this movie sucks and I have to write something about it. And I knew <laughs> um, you know, I couldn't just like excoriate it because you right. don't want to burn your contacts, right? That's the easy way to like, you know, be blackballed <laughs> and blacklisted. So A there was that B, I had a you know two hour drive home ahead of me yeah. because of all the traffic, and C, you know you you typically get vouchers for these screenings when they give you like a a, a parking lot to park in. They give you these these printed vouchers that mm. you stick in the machine. The machine is supposed to recognize it, and you know you're comped for the parking. Occasionally, and more occasionally than people would you know more than people would like. The machines don't recognize the voucher. So now you're this guy who's holding up the rest of the other journalists who are trying to get out. Right. And you're, you just want to solve the problem. And there's no attendant there to help you, right? There's nobody. So you're yeah. just this dude who's the roadblock. So, you know, you fork out your credit card and you feed the machine and then you're free to go. So, yeah. So not only did I have to drive all the way out here and then drive all the way home, but now I also have to pay the exorbitant $20 feed to mm. watch this crap movie. Yeah. So, you know, it was like, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? <laughs> this is not getting me anywhere in the industry the way I wanted it to, right? Yeah, but you were very supportive of parking structures. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's why they exist is because of me. <laughs> I think they have my name the on movies, a plaque and a picture. The movies are the side business. That's where the real money is, man, in yeah. parking. Oh, well, totally. <laughs> totally. I think that should be the racket we get into, to be honest. Yeah, Just right. have a screening room. A parking lot beneath it done <laughs> set for life the movie is free yeah exactly for the parking. <laughs> exactly wow i guess that's all i wanted to say about la for now brian uh that's uh, that's more than i wanted to hear about la <sighs> well you know here's the thing though but you sell that script and i'm happy to talk about la all you want <laughs> absolutely absolutely the one thing i, I want to say about love la yeah if you buy Renee's script, I love L.A. <laughs> Brian Newman, thank you. <laughs> the one, the one thing I do want to say about L.A., though, is that, <clears throat> um, you know, it, it does feel kind of like, as a person who doesn't live there and had to drive in all the time, yeah. it does yeah. kind of feel like this frontier that you slowly tame. Um, and, you know, there are, there are moments of that uh, that felt adventurous. And, yeah, every uh, time you're on the freeway, it feels adventurous, man. Talk about a frontier. It feels like the Wild West when you get on those freeways. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, you're driving like in, you're in Orange County. I'm in Arizona, and, and the lanes are much wider. Hmm. You get in there, all of a sudden, everything shrinks by about half. Yeah. You know, you've got about three to four inches on either side, you know, before you're going to hit someone else, and they're going to hit you and yelling at you. They're, they're honking. I'm like, what, hmm. what is this? Exactly. This is like no man's land, land or yeah. lad. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that kid belong to? <laughs> we could do a whole show on LA, man. That's no man's lad. Uh, Snowman? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this joke, this bad joke is slowly evolving. Um, all right, Brian. Well, that's enough about talking about LA. All right. 